Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, today I'm joined with uh, Brian Hammer, who is uh, a Muslim for the last six years. Previously he was a Roman Catholic, and today he's going to tell us a little bit about his journey. Assalamu alaikum, Brian. Wa alaikum salam. How are you today? Good. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Very good. Alhamdulillah. Now just tell us a little bit about uh, how did you come to find out about Islam? Well, uh, previous to coming to university, I didn't know anything about Islam. I was very much in the dark. No one had told me it was good, bad, or anything. It just was. I knew it existed, but that was about it. But when I came to university, uh, a friend in my program was Muslim. And so through her, I was kind of exposed to Islam, but not in a direct way. I mean, she didn't actively say, this is what Islam is about. This is, you know, this is this. Kafir. Mm -hmm. It was just... Yeah. She just lived her life in an you know, Islamic way, and <clears throat> and so you know I kind of became comfortable with you know Muslims being people who are not strange or not you know, practicing in some weird way that I'm not used to, and mm -hmm. they seem to have the same kind of morals that I do, and and so it got me interested in Islam and you know, wanting to find out you know what is this religion that I know nothing about, mm -hmm. uh, so that's that was kind of my entrance into Islam. Alhamdulillah, what made you, uh, upon seeing some of the actions of Muslims, what made you go a step further and accept Islam as your religion? Well, after after knowing this person for oh, about, I'd say, a little over a year, I guess, or about something around here, I decided that I should read the Quran to find out a little bit more. Um, there's no point in like, asking people, just you know, find out from the source, what is, what is this religion about? Mm -hmm. So, and then after reading the Quran, uh, I mean, it was, it was pretty obvious to me that this was, this was the right path. I mean, there was a few stages in reading, the, like I read it over a course of a week, but that course of a week, uh, there was a, a great transformation in my kind of understanding of Islam, of the Quran, and in like the first few days, in the first third of it, I was very skeptical, and you know, mm -hmm. what is this all about? And, you know, kind of looking at it with a, a bit of a, of a bias of, you know, this is obviously not the Word of God because, yeah. you know, I was Catholic before and I had my own mm -hmm. beliefs. Uh, but I was immediately caught uh, by the, the style and the tone and how it's, you know, first person from the point of view of God and mm -hmm. and and the things that were said, it just really caught me off guard. I was like, what's going on here? And then this, by about the middle of it, you know, I was kind of saying, well, you know, this, this has a lot of merit, you know, this deserves some deeper... You know, reflection really think about this sort of thing and then by the last third of it I was like yeah I, you know I, I think this is the word of God alhamdulillah and so you know then I called up my friend and I was like okay so this is the word of God so I have to follow this what do I do and so that was you know that was alhamdulillah alhamdulillah and uh, even the English uh, translation has that much effect on people who are not Muslim the Arabic even takes it to another level, and that's something that, as Muslims, we should always be uh, very thankful because it's a, it's a blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, it's true. It, with, I mean, you know, with Roman Catholicism, you have so many levels of translation between you know, what we have now with English and that was originally, um, yeah, Aramaic or um, uh, like the Old Testament, I guess, was Hebrew. Um, but you know, it's you, know, you have this. The original text, as it was revealed by God in Arabic, and I can't yet read that, but uh, yeah. inshallah, I will be able to. Inshallah. Read it. inshallah. Initially, what was the reaction from your friends and the family and those around you? How did they react? Um, it was they reacted fairly well, I would say. Uh, my friends, they didn't really treat me any differently, as far as I know, anyways. And they just kept treating me the same as they always had. Um, and in fact, I had one friend who called me up. Uh, a few days after I had said the shahada, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how he found out, and, but he called me up and congratulated me, which I thought was very strange to this day. I still don't know why he did that <laughs> because he is Catholic himself, and uh, but whatever, you know, come to that. Yeah. Was, you know, I, I thought that was oh wow, it was very nice. Yeah, yeah it's a nice gesture, a very nice gesture. But with my parents, uh, it was a little bit different because my mother is very Roman Catholic and. Mm -hmm. You know, she brought me up in such a way. I was an altar boy for a 
many, many years. And, you know, so we were always went to church. We were very, um, very practicing in that manner. And so <clears throat> my father as well. And so, you know, when she found out, it was all very emotional and mm -hmm. crying and, uh, what have you done? And, but, uh, you know, once they kind of came to their senses, I mean, they don't think what I've done is right. They don't think I'm on the right path, but, but they respect, to a certain degree, my decision. And uh, you know, when I go home, my mother will cook me turkey bacon, and she won't, you know, she won't feed me pork, and she won't, you know, argue with me about anything. She's, you know, she's. They still love me, and they still accept me okay. to a certain degree. Uh -huh. That's that's good. Now, uh, now that you've uh, done the shahada and accepted Islam, how has your journey been once you accepted Islam? Uh, well. I mean, people talk about um, converting or reverting or what have you, mm -hmm. and you know I don't think any of those terms are. Really, they don't seem accurate to what I've experienced. For me, it's more like awakening. It's like you know the veil has been lifted from my eyes. I've I've seen the truth now, or you know it's maybe rebirth or well that's not the right, but I, I guess awakening or you know, and so I mean. The process has been partly a process of, of awakening and realizing what, you know, what this life is about and you know, the way I've been living and seeing it through a better uh, means of judging my actions. Um, when I was a uh, Roman Catholic, I was very hypocritical of my actions. I mean, I didn't notice at the time, obviously, but um, once I started evaluating my life from you know, the point of view of, and from an Islamic point of view, readjust the way I lived and that sort of thing. But the process itself has been uh, definitely gradual. It's not, you know, say that you had and all of a sudden you're Muslim and you're practicing and mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, well, Allah guides us in, uh, in stages that are easy for us. Mm -hmm. and that because, I mean, I think if, if someone came up to you just after you've done the chat and said, you have to do this, you have to do this, yeah. It's a lot. I mean, it's really a completely different way of, of living one's life. I mean, I don't know if it's easier if you're brought up into it. I, I've never experienced it, but I know, you know, when you've, you know, I was 20, I see yeah, 20 when I converted. By that point, you know, you have a, a very set way of life and you, know, you have your own religious um, practices and beliefs and your way of viewing the world. And so it takes a long time and a lot of effort to, to get out of those habits and to, and to completely change your life, which Islam really requires that you really reevaluate your, your concept of the world and of life. And so, to do it all at once would be too much. I mean, I mean I'm sure people would kind of balk at it and say, well, no, this is, I can't handle this. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah showed me or gave me guidance and knowledge in stages. Um, like, for example, with, <coughs> with prayers. I originally, you know, I agreed, okay, yeah, we should, there should be more prayers, and, you know, there, and I knew that there was a way of praying uh, that Muslims practice, but I didn't quite understand how they came up with that, like, where that came from, because I'd only read the Quran, and I didn't really know much about the Hadith and that sort of thing, and so I, I prayed, but it wasn't, it wasn't five times a day, and it wasn't in the manner that Muhammad has taught us, so But it got me used to to praying more often, more frequently, and with a little bit more sincerity. Mm -hmm. And then, once I was comfortable with that, uh, I realized, you know, I, in my second reading of the Quran, oh yeah, okay, there are it does say that there are five times that you should be praying. I just, you know, it's not in one spot here; they are in the list. But mm -hmm. so once I realized that, okay, now I'm going to pray five times a day, still in my own kind of format. But then once I became comfortable with that, then you know, I found out. How one prays properly, and then, um, and then, uh, I wasn't praying at the specific times during the day. So then, you know, I had this uh, inspiration, I guess, or, or some sort of guidance. Where one day, I just sort of realized that you know, if I'm if I'm living my life uh, or my schedule, scheduling my life around uh, my daily mm -hmm. 
tasks and needs and you know, going to the movies and dinner with my friends and working on the job and you know, making my prayers fit in with that schedule, kind of fitting them in where it would fit. It, it, I mean, it wasn't, that wasn't uh, the right way to be because, you know, I mean, essentially I'm saying that going to the movies and my friends and these sorts of things are more important to me than, than Allah and praising and thanking Allah. And so once I realized that, I said, well, no, I have to change my life. I have to, you know, I have to live first by Allah and schedule my life on that. And then your everything else comes secondary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like that. I mean, it's, it's a very gradual process of you, know, you get used to this, and then you get used to this, and then you get used to this. And, you know, I still have a long way to go. There's still a lot that I don't know of. But. Mm -hmm. Do you find that now that it's uh, a bit easier to plan your day, and a bit easier to go with your daily ibadat or religious uh, duties, now that you've understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first and everything else comes after, do you find things a bit easier? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at first, it required conscious effort mm -hmm. to uh, to plan, you know, to say, no, I'm not going to go to dinner right now. And my friends would say, hey, let's go to dinner. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, no, I can't. Yeah. Gotta pray. Um, but now, you know, after a little while of doing that, you know, uh, now it just, it's second nature to me. And it's, you know, I just, I just don't plan things that specific times and it's uh, yeah just it's it's what feels right it's just this is the way I should be Alhamdulillah how is it that uh, the community well brothers and sisters and how have they been accepting towards you and how has your opinion of them been as you come to Islam uh, well very accepting uh, I would say uh, everyone has been you know, wonderful people such as yourself thank you um, the, at first, it was my journey to Islam was uh, very individual, um, mm -hmm. isolated, and you know some people sort of say, well, that's you know really too bad. The Muslim community should be there to help these people out. But I think it's a necessary part of conversion. It's mm -hmm. um, it helps you to figure out you know what's going on, establish the foundations of your faith on your own, because. Um, I mean, it, you're naturally prone to question, um, you know, why do people do this, why, why this, why this? You know, not questioning the Quran, not questioning the revelation, but just the connection between practice and the revelation. And so, there's this process of, of doubt and of, you know, trying to understand where everything in the, religion, in the religion comes from. And so I think you have to do that on your own, because you're not going to just trust what people tell you right away, mm -hmm. and so you become comfortable with it. Um, but then, you know, I reached a point where I was uh, comfortable enough that I wasn't too worried that people would be telling me, oh, you're doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. And I needed uh, that support group to, you know, to, to strengthen my iman, my, my deen, and, and to live a more Muslim life because, you know, I'm surrounded by my friends who are not Muslim. And mm -hmm. it's very difficult to, uh, to live a really proper life. Muslim life when you're constantly fighting with, you know, the traditions of, of your society and the way people do things. And so I, once I became comfortable with religion, then it was, you know, I needed that you know, kind of support group of, of the Muslims. And you know, once I, you know, I came join the MSA and yeah. start going to the mosque, and that's, you know, I, my my uh, my life has definitely changed from that point, and I've become, you know, much more, uh, much better in my daily practices of my team strengthening my character and that's Alhamdulillah, that's very good to hear. Now that uh, I guess on the second part of your journey, this is after you accepted the Shahada, how have the things you have seen and come across after your acceptance, what, how has your journey been after accepting Islam? Uh, well, as I said before, it's it's been like realizing a world that I hadn't seen before and it, I mean, it, it feels like this is right, this is natural, this is the way I should be. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of cases, like for example with, with uh, zakat or, or helping people out, <clears throat> at first I had to make a, a very sort of conscious effort of, okay, I'm doing this because I'm supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't the kind of person that, you know, I had no problem with giving people to, you know, or giving money to people who were poor and that sort of thing, but... It just wasn't something that I did, 
And so then I made, okay, I'm going to do this because I have to. Mm -hmm. And once I started doing that, I realized, you know, this is, this is what we're supposed to be doing. I felt so much better after having done those things. Like, I guess it was, the only way I can kind of describe it is that my soul was happy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you get money or, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, something nice happens or like you get some material gain or something like that, you know, you, you feel happy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's kind of a superficial happiness that, I mean, that's all I kind of knew before. And once I started doing these or, or when I would, you know, turn away from some temptation or something, mm -hmm. I would feel this, this kind of overwhelming joy and, and comfort. Uh, you know, almost like what people might describe as, as love. You know, it's, it, it's really like intoxicating and it makes you feel like a much more wholesome joy. And so a lot of my life has been like that sense of really, um, you know, feeling that this is much better and feeling almost relief mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. I've turned away from, from all, you know, turned away from, uh, from shark and from, you know, all these, these practices, these ignorant practices that are you know, against my nature. Now, given your experience and what you've seen and been through on your journey, how would you uh, give da'wah to other non-Muslims, or how we as Muslims should be uh, sending the message of Islam to other people? Well, I can only speak from my personal experience. Uh, you know, there's countless ways of giving da'wah, and everyone has their own opinion, and I don't know what's right, but, uh, I mean, my personal opinion is based on my own experience and how I came to Islam. And it's catered towards the kind of society of which I'm a part, which is, you know, in university students, intellectuals, at an early point in their life, and like North American background, and that sort of thing. Um, but I find that just, I guess, a, a passive, uh, passive dawah of presenting yourself as a Muslim and, and living as a good Muslim should mm -hmm. in front of these people, not, you know, constantly rebuking them and telling them this and that, you should be doing this, and, but just being a Muslim uh, in front of them and, and still interacting with them and socializing with them and being with them as you would be with any friend, you know, as long as it's nothing that's haram, but, mm -hmm. you know, and and that will make them comfortable with Islam, okay, it's, you know, he's not a terrorist, he's not a, uh, you know, someone who worships the moon or anything weird like that. And then, then they kind of get interested, and then they ask questions. And I've experienced this on several occasions, where people will come up to me and ask me, you know, "What's this? What's this Quran all about? Can you read me something out of it?" Or, mm -hmm. or you know, what made you change? What made you, you know, blah blah blah? Let me tell you. Yeah. And so, when people come to you and ask you, mm -hmm. they're ready for information. They're ready to kind of accept information in a less biased manner. Whereas if you're telling them, you get very defensive, and the shield goes up, and they're like, mm -hmm. "Oh." So. I think uh, just the, the soft sell, just exactly. you know, present yourself and allow them to come to you, it seems to you know, be what works best in my opinion. Alhamdulillah. It's said that the, the Prophet وسلم, was, his actions were the Quran. What he did and his behavior was exemplary of the characteristics of how Muslims should be. And I think that touches on how we as Muslims should uh, send a message of Islam, basically do the things we have to do and go your life doing exactly what Islam asks of you. And inshallah, people will see that and see that light. Uh, as a final question, uh, what advice do you have for those people who uh, are thinking of becoming as Muslim? Because you had mentioned earlier that there's a phase which is individualistic. Mm -hmm. What should they do within themselves to, uh, before they come to Islam? Well, I mean, I guess the first step is haven't done it is to read the Quran. I mean, it's for me before that, uh, it was just sort of like, oh, this is kind of interesting. But once I read the Quran, I mean, that's that's really the, the core of, of, the, of the way of life of Islam is, is the Quran. You know, and, and question yourself while you're reading the Quran, you know, does everything make sense? Does this, you know, is there anything that doesn't jive with what I know of life or my experiences or um, any sort of, you know, Christians or Jews, or, you know, what I know of. Mm -hmm. um, and then, beyond that, um, I don't know, I mean, I think, I want to say, sort of trust, um, 
to the practice of Islam, trust the people of Islam in their practices because, you know, I've investigated it and I've found it, you know, with every practice, it has a very strong connection to the revelation, to the practices of uh, the Prophet. Um, but I, I think that's something that people have to do themselves. I mean, you have to do that investigation yourself. You have to become comfortable with that yourself. So, you know, question it, really, absolutely. Um, you know, seek the answers because they're there and uh, I guarantee you will not be, uh, you'll not find the answers lacking. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, Thank you. Now that the month of Ramadan is here, how are you enjoying Ramadan? And uh, I see you at the mosque sometimes. How are you enjoying this whole? Uh, sometimes, all the time. <laughs> uh, wonderful. It's, uh, I, I started fasting right away. Um, but, you know, each time it's been uh, much better and uh, perhaps slightly more sincere each time. But also, you know, I'll do more like last Ramadan I did Tarawih for the first time. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing Tahajjud for the first time. And, so each, you know, each step is you know, getting more and more out of it, and it's, yeah, it's definitely a wonderful time. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, and uh, may Allah give us hidayah on the straight path of Islam, and thank you for joining us. Assalamu